So this is a little pre-video for the Belty Junior. These are the stepper motors that it uses. It is a 28BYJ-48 5 volt DC unipolar stepper motor. So there's five wires. It's intended to be driven by a Darlington transistor array. So basically driven by four transistors, four switches that turn the coils off or on in sequence. i grab one of those, I'll show you. This is intended to be the driver. The motor plugs right in, blink. Little lights for each phase of the coil. You can run it off of five or 12 volts just by throwing it through some resistors. But what these are, Darling transistor is just a high powered transistor. So when you have an input on one, two, three, or four, it turns on the corresponding A, B, C, or D phase. Now this is intended as a precept for the Belty Junior, so you don't have to modify these into bipolar steppers. I'm going to draw and show what that means because, while well, it's not very hard to do, I wanted to understand how it goes, and I didn't see any good explanation. So, motor. This is your standard bipolar stepper motor. It has two coils that basically attract magnets around the side. So you turn one coil on, attract the magnet, turn the next coil on, attract the magnet, turn this coil on, attract that magnet, and it rotates one step at a time. In a real motor, you have a lot more um, faces and the coils are repeated around, but it's just two coils. So these are called bipolar because you will attract, or you'll run current one direction to attract, and then reverse the current direction of the current to repel the magnet on each of these faces. So they both need the ability to change direction. So this is two H bridges to drive that, which would be what, four, eight transistors each. Generally use much more complicated stepper motor drivers that get EMF back feedback and time the steps nicely. An easier way to drive these is to turn them into unipolar stepper drivers, where in order to get current flowing, in this direction, do one phase with C being the common ground. So if you do power here, you can see it goes straight to the other. Next power to this phase comes down, power to this phase, power to this phase. And you would have a sequence of one, two, three, four to make your stepper motor turn, which gets you back to this driver. They're very easy to operate, very simple to run, very cheap. You know, this is just package transistors. These board is, you know, even fancier than you need. That is what this is. Now you notice C is in the middle of the coil, so the resistance between your center tab and the other guys. So I check our resistance framing. We get 21 ohms, 21 ohms, 21 ohms, 21 ohms. If you use our bi-directional stepper, do the same thing, what are we going to get? Nothing. Nothing? Alright, you should be 21. You should be 21. 21, so we have 21 on the blue and the yellow. Because what we did here convert our bi-directional motor. So we came in, we cut that trace. So we say this is blue, yellow, and this would be red, and pink and orange. So we look at our bi-directional again, we want to measure what's the difference of current or resistance between the blue and the yellow. Is that really a coil, or did I mix myself up? 41 ohms. So twice the resistance between the center, because you're measuring the entire coil. And the orange and the pink are another coil. The other coil, I should say. Excellent. So, this can no longer be controlled by a Darlington transistor array, because we need the current to flow in two directions. It's a bipolar stepper, it needs a fancier driver. Let's modify this guy and see how they work inside. 
It's actually very easy to do, deceptively easy. So if you don't understand anything we just went through, don't worry about it. Still get this going. So what are we looking at here? So we have our wires coming in and there's two rows of pads. Those pads are here, 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 for the first row, here, here for the second row. But you'll see the outside wires are wired up to these two leads and the inside wires are wired up to these two leads. So the pink and orange, the pink and the orange are the outside. That's this bottom coil. Those three steppers, those three solder pads are right there. And the blue and the yellow, blue and the yellow are the inside coil. And so the center taps are right there. If we cut right here, right that little trace between the coils, we're just cutting that trace, then we'll still have a center tap on one coil so we'll still get half the resistance there, but it will not be connected to the other coil critically. So you have one completely independent coil, the pink and orange, and one coil that's got a center tap, and we'll just make sure we don't connect this center tap to anything, and life will be well. Razor blade. The trick is not to cut too far, and not to cut yourself. But once you've exposed the copper, I like to expose it just so I can get a good look at it. Easily check if there is resistance between these two. You see we have zero F, that means infinite resistance, that means the trace is not there. We touch these probes together, we'll get zero ohms. We got these guys, yep, 21, should be zero to all of these. So, this motor's done. It's very annoying to get these cases off and back on without damaging the motor. Two done. Job's done. Happy printing.